Could you turn to the book of Ephesians, which we've been in for a while now. Um, and I'm always amazed at what God is doing in and through um, me uh, as I as I labor to put, provide a word for his people. Um, it's not me, but him working in me. And I'm just I'm just in awe of what he's done. We want to go to the second chapter of the book of Ephesians. And I'm just going to read a small portion. And we're going to unpackage something today. And I believe that it's going to be for the uplifting of everyone who hears this message. Amen. Second Ephesians, uh, and I'm going to begin at verse number one. Amen. 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 And it reads, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our own flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Yeah. For by grace you have been saved through faith that not of yourself it is a gift of God. Yeah. Not of works least anyone should boast. But we are his workmanship. Yeah. Created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. May the Amen. Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. You may be seated. We are his workmanship. In the last couple of weeks um few weeks we we talked about us being um, I think the bride of Christ we talked about uh, the temple but today we're going to look at uh, Paul's description of us as believers as God's workmanship for we are his workmanship and we want to understand what is meant by his workmanship. And I believe if we could lay hold and grasp what is meant, it will not only bless us, but maybe make us walk this walk of faith a little better. And understand our Heavenly Father better and what his desire of us to be a little better. We are his workmanship. Amen. Ephesians 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before that we should walk in them. Now, King James Version and New King James both use the word workmanship, which implies a thing that is made. 
NIV calls it his handiwork. The New Living Translation calls it his masterpiece. The Amplified says workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art. Amen. The complete Jewish Bible calls it his making. And the Holman Christian Standard Bible called it his creation. Now that's a picture, a tremendous picture of who we are as believers. Now remember in Ephesians, Paul broke down seven different views of us as believers. We had to kind of sometimes skip past this one they call the workmanship. We always hear people saying the bride of Christ. We often hear somebody say the temple of Christ, that the spirit of Christ dwells in us as a picture in the temple. We talk about being a part of the family of Christ, family of God. But how many of us really look at this term, the workmanship? The Bible states that God loves the whole world. And he loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us, to save us. God saved us because we were lost in sin and trespass. Just like the whole world is lost in sin and trespass. So Christ died for us. Christ shed his blood for us. We did not deserve our salvation, nor did we earn it. We were saved by grace through faith. But that's only part of why God saved us. He also saved us for himself. Amen. Now I want y'all to understand this. I want y'all to really think about it. He not only saved us for our benefit, he saved us for his benefit. He saved us for himself. It was always in his mind to have a peculiar people just for himself. Yes. Exodus 19, 3, 7, 3 through 5 gives us some insight on I used to have all my scriptures written out, typed out and all, because it helps me um, not to have to flip through pages, but I'm gonna be, God, with God's help, be able to do this. Verses three through five reads, and Moses went up to God, and the Lord, Lord called him from the mountain, saying, thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. God is telling Moses that you see how I pulled you out of bondage mm -hmm. in the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I brought you unto myself. <clears throat> Listen to what he said. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle, eagle's way and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for the whole earth is mine. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Yes. It was always in God's mind to pull a people out of the world. Amen. He knew that this world was a fallen world, but his job, his idea, the thought in his mind was to pull a people out of this wicked, fallen, trespass-filled world and make this a people specifically for himself. 
to be an example and a witness and a testimony so that he could save his whole creation. Amen. 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 And though all the earth is the Lord's and he loves all, his desire is for a special people. Yeah. A special treasure. Those words we kind of glance over, it's so powerful sometimes to look at how the different translations use. The New King James called it um, a special treasure. New American Standard called it his own possession. King James called it a peculiar treasure. The NIV said a treasured possession, his own special treasure. Amen. He wanted a people for himself, personal, special, for himself alone. Yes. Not for the world, but for God. Yes. Of all the people in the world, black people. White people, Jews and Gentiles, smart people, and not so smart people, and big people and little people, and old people and young people, and Republican people and Democratic people. It is the believer in Jesus Christ who confesses and repents and who who has died with Christ and has risen, risen with him in new life that is his workmanship. Yes. It's not no matter whatever else you are, none of that matters. Amen. It's the belief in Jesus Christ Amen. that makes you his workmanship. Yes. Yes. And we sit here in our soul full of our democratic love or our Republican love, or our blackness love, or our whiteness love, or all kinds of superficial, or our look at me, I'm 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 pretty, or whatever you want to call it. We look at all these things as things to aspire to and to be prideful of, but it, none of that matters. None of that matters over being God's workmanship, Amen. His masterpiece. Yes. He has made us his masterpiece. And he has promised to perfect us. Amen. He has done it all. We didn't do nothing. We are his workmanship. When we are a new people, we are his masterpiece. When we want him and his new life, and above, above anything in the world, he will give us not only a mate, give us love, he gives us fellowship, he gives us a whole lot, but we must want him first. And we must want him most. I, I, I'm amazed how many people take their eyes off of God, put our eyes on something we desire, and we pursue what we desire above everything else. And we will forsake God, we will forsake the assembly, we will forsake righteousness. We will forsake anything for a desire we have in our heart. Nothing should come ahead of God himself. Amen. And though the world claims the non-believer, the Lord's portion is us who believe in him. The world can claim those who have no believe. The world can have we belong to the Lord. We are his workmanship. Though there are people and religions and nations and organizations who we look at, look at and at, at times think that they are good people, we have to remember none of us are good to the Lord. But he has promised to count us as good, to establish us as good, and to perfect us if we accept his son as both Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We are his workmanship. 
And the world needs to see us as his masterpiece. In the world, but separate from the world, different from the world, how we walk, how we live, how we love, how we treat each other. God's desire is that all the world would know that we are his masterpiece. We are his workmanship. But how can he who is all good claim all of humanity, not even think of all of humanity, all Americans as his masterpiece? How can he do that when we walk in open rebellion? Full of hatred, full of wickedness, full of lustfulness, full of perversions, and full of violence. We think we are good, but are so full of excuses for our behavior. When our desire for him outweighs our desire for the things of the world, he begins in us an amazing work. He begins to prune us, mold us, shape us into the image of his beloved son. He begins as the great artist to make us over as his masterpiece. One of the interesting things about this relationship in Paul's letters to the Ephesians is God is working on two masterpieces at the same time. And this was the new revelation for me personally. He is not only perfecting us as individuals, while we are often resisting his hand upon our lives, he is also working on his church at the same time. Amen. And you and I are supposed to be a living light into the world. But our assemblies, our assemblies, we're supposed to be the living light, but our assemblies are also supposed to be a light unto the world. Amen. And the word of God speaks about us as an assembly being his workmanship. And he speaks about it often. As God is cutting away and revealing and then cutting some more and cutting some more, we wonder about all the continuing work God is doing in our lives. More of his masterwork is being revealed. For which we become a living testimony and God is glorified. Listen to what Ephesians 3, 9 and 11 says. Amen. It reads... And to make all us make to and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages he has hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Jesus Christ our Lord. And that was a, a tremendous statement, but what does it mean? Paul is stating that we as believers demonstrate to the universe his wisdom, his manifold wisdom, his multi-sided wisdom. We are supposed to demonstrate to the whole world and the whole universe God's wisdom. Yeah. And so many of us in our assemblies fall short. And so many of the assemblies of God fall short. We don't want to do that. We want to complete what God has started in us. Paul also stated that us as workmanship, as his workmanship, has work to do. We are not to just sit and be religious. 
we are to do good works. That he prepared in advance for us to do. We all have assignments and we together have an assignment. Amen. We must surrender to do his will. We must seek to do his will. For us, all, and then we must seek it and then do his will. And he will always send help for us. And as we seek to do his will and work to do his will and do his will, it will glorify Christ. Isaiah 64, 8 reminds us that he is the potter and we are the clay. We are the works of his hands. Yes. As he molds us and shapes us, it is not always pleasant for us, but he has promised that all things work to our good, no matter how it seems. Mm -hmm. If we believe in him, we are his masterpiece. Yes. He is the master creative artist. And we individually and collectively are his workmanship. Amen. Romans 8, 28 and 30 gives us a picture of God working on us yeah, yeah, yeah. and through us mm -hmm. <laughs> who are his masterpiece. Amen. It says, mm. and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He is trying to make us over into the image of his son. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Yes, yes. I, as pastor of Spirit of Christ Global Ministry, trust God with the vision he gave me and my wife for you. God wants you all to accept that you are his workmanship. Yes. He is working on you as well as me. As an individual, you need to accept, cooperate, and agree, knowing that you are in the best of hands. Yes. And we as an assembly of, a, of believers must have confidence, trust, agreement, and zeal for him also. Amen. For good works. There's work that we as an assembly of believers are supposed to accomplish. It's not an accident that he's given us a place. There's stuff that he wants us to accomplish. And he needs each and every one of us in order to do it. It is going to be a glorious work, I'm telling y'all. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be trying at times. It's going to be challenging. Because he's still molding and shaping us as individuals and as a collective group. But all of us must believe that the best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. We are his workmanship. And there's much work that we have to do to justify his faith in us. Amen. Because we have so much faith in him. God bless you all. We are his workmanship.